This is Devilman Crybaby, which is a surprisingly lame name for a pretty amazing show. It only has 10 episodes, but it was the only show to ever make me cry while watching it. Twice. Now, before I really get into this, I just need to make two things clear. This show isn't for kids, younger audiences shouldn't watch it. Secondly, there will be spoilers in the video. For all of you left, thank you all for watching, it means a lot. So, like I was saying, this is Devilman Crybaby. In this show, a guy gets devil powers and he's our protagonist for most of the show. But I'm not really interested in covering this show in a general sense. I want to focus on our main villain and antagonist of the show, Leo. He's evil, manipulative, and worst of all, caring? So we need to break down a few things right off the bat to really understand Leo's character. A big question some might have initially is why would Leo turn Akira into a devil man? Considering from any sort of logical perspective, it doesn't make sense for him to do it, but that's if we're focusing from our human perspective. The reason why Leo helps out Akira isn't for any sort of nefarious purpose here. The reason he did it was actually pretty simple. When nobody was there for, you know, there for him, Akira helped him up by offering a hand. So by giving Akira devil powers, it's basically the same thing. It's offering Akira up and lending him a hand, you know, when he'd be in need. It's essentially just returning the favor in his eyes. And now, I want to build up from here, so that way the ending and why Leo cries at the end makes more sense to you as a viewer. Because it's very easy to watch this scene to get the takeaway, ah, love's the answer. It's just love, it all makes sense now, and while love is a key theme in this show, it doesn't solve as much as the fans on the internet think it does. So at the start of the TV show, Akira and Leo are fighting over the life of a kitten. There's a weak and sick kitten who is not likely to survive, and so Akira protects the kitten to, you know, give it a chance, its best chance at survival and a happy life. Which makes Ryo upset because he knows that the kitten isn't strong enough to survive, and that it'll pass anyways. So they argue about it, ultimately Ryo was right, and is confused as to why Akira is sad when the outcome seemed, you know, obvious. And Akira says the lines to Leo, you were crying too. This is probably the most interesting line across all of history, at least in this context. So anyways, why does this kitten matter? Well, it's because the kitten is symbolic for both Akira and Leo, because all life, in a sense, is fragile. And just because, you know, it probably will fade away, that doesn't mean that you should try and speed up that process. And while Akira gets that, Ryo doesn't until the very end of the series. So jumping far ahead into the future, Ryo uses fear mongering to trick humanity into basically punching its own ticket because Miki wasn't strong enough to survive in the cold, you know, she didn't. And Akira is mad at Ryo for, you know, doing all of this for assisting in the, in the, you know, demise of everything that he cares about. So, obviously fed up with this, he chooses to fight Leo, and doing it, you know, it isn't a fight that he can win, at least not fully. I mean, sorry to spoil it, but, you know, he dies doing it. But the message in the baton that he was trying to pass to Leo does eventually reach to him after his passing. The message that one person can make the difference. I believe that is what the Baton Pass represents in the story. The knowledge that one person can change the outcome of history forever if they just try to. So at the end of this story, Leo is emotionally devastated because he now realizes that in a way everything is like that kitten. Everything can easily fall apart with just one wrong touch. So the knowledge of the fact that he had the one thing he cared about ripped away from him unknowingly breaks him and he starts crying over the loss of his best friend, Akira Fudo. And this is what can happen when you don't know your own strength. You'll drive everyone away and you'll end up miserable. 
It's a lesson in the fact that because something's likely to happen doesn't mean that you need to assist that. You don't need to be smart and try to get ahead of the curve. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just support someone when they're at their weakest. And Leo had to learn that the hard way. So yeah, that's some insight on Leo as a character and explaining exactly how a demon learned to truly cry. The old message, you don't know what you have until it's gone, fits perfectly here. And I just want to touch on one indirect note that I saw on Reddit that really pissed me off. And it was the part when Akira erased, you know, erased the people that hunted down and, you know, put Tamiki to rest. A lot of people said, oh, I thought Akira was the good guy. This seems like such a bad writing choice. No, it's not, you idiot. If someone destroyed your favorite person in the whole wide world and celebrated their demise, would you realistically just let that slide? If you're human, you're not going to. I know I wouldn't, and I have the guts to admit that. But yeah, the like that part and people not understanding like why Akira would do that drove me so nuts. Um, anyways, I have a Discord server in the description if you want to talk to me and you know the people in my corner. I've been your host, Tragedy TV, and I'll see you all in the next one. If you want to like and subscribe, that'd help me out a lot. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I love this show. I honestly feel like it's a movie that's just super long. It's amazing. Thank you for everyone who worked on Devil Man Cry Baby. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day and career. Thank you.